Hey, let's go over tongues. Let's go ahead and do a deep dive study of tongues and look at every single definition of tongues and see what we come up with starting in Genesis all the way to Revelation. So it's going to be a little bit little bit uh, longer study than I usually do, but I think we'll get something out of it. So here's the Hebrew word. We'll start in Hebrew and then we'll go into to Greek. So here it is, it's used 105 times. So if we click on these, you can start seeing what these are, uh, what they are, the definition of them. So we have language, languages, a bay, I don't know how they got a bay, a wedge, an evil speaker, fire, a, babble, a babbler, a talker, tongue, and tongues. So, so right now we, we have a vast variety of what this, what this can possibly mean out of 105 times 97 times it's used as a tongue a muscle in your mouth uh let's see what else that we got here we have to be silent to be quiet hold your peace uh silence again held in peace be deaf whatever i don't know how that it comes maybe because they're mute in their their tongue and speaking to be silent uh, we, then we go to Aramaic. So we have some languages named. We have Aramaic, Syrian, and Syrac. We have, what do we have going on here? We have, uh, let's see, the golf. We have a golf on there. We have uh, to hush. To, again, we have another to hold your peace. Uh, the very first time that it's used is in Genesis 10, 5. Uh, and it says, uh by there were the isles of the Gentiles divided in the land, even one after his tongue after their family. So it's speaking of a known language. So they were divided by tongues. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably have to do with, with the Tower of Babel, where Nimrod and his people built a tower up to heaven. And God says, if they, if God didn't intervene, they would accomplish what they were trying to do. They were trying to get to heaven and try to overthrow God, uh, is what I think. But God says, Hey, that's not going to happen. Destroyed, destroyed the tower of Babel and everyone had different language. That's where you get babbling from Babel, the language. Uh, but first of all, we want to do, when we do these hermeneutic studies, we want to see what it's saying, but also what it's not saying. And out of all the definitions, 105 in Hebrew, we see not one single time is it a angelic babbling language speaking in tongues like they do in church. Uh, but let's go ahead and say, give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's go look at the, uh, let's go look at the uh, Greek definitions of them and go from there. Let's close this, scroll down to the Greek one. So in Greek, it is used 59 times. So we have 105 times in the Hebrew and 59 times in the Greek. Uh, let's see what it, what it says in Greek. It says tongues, tongue, languages, dialect, uh, names another another language, Hebrew. So we have four or five different languages that are, that are named. Uh, we have Hebrew and Aramaic named in here. So we have Aramaic twice. Speaking a foreign language uh, and tongues out of out of the 59 times it's used 50 times as your the tongue in your in your mouth again what is not mentioned is also important that what is mentioned and what is not mentioned is a, a babbling language that some charismatic people do inside the church so you got to be very careful when you read god's word let God speak for himself. We're not talking about a prayer language. We are talking about tongues, speaking in tongues that some people do in public. So by the definitions of the Greek and the Hebrew, we have a very, very strong evidence that it is a language because it names a couple of the languages, a dialect known to people. It might not be known to you, but it is known to someone. This is this is going to be our solid foundation for this. Uh, let's go look at the sense of it. What is the sense of tongues? Let's close this. So in here we can see that that the sense of it, out of all the times, 105 and in the 59, we have two. 
what is that? A hundred and hundred and three times out of there. I have a hundred, two hundred and times, one hundred and fifty times. It means tongue, and this literally means the muscle, the the mass of muscle used to cover it in your in your mouth, which is your tongue. <laughs> so it's pretty self-explanatory. And then the second most times that it's used is speech, verbal words coming out, and this literally says physical aspects of speech words of a language. So what we need to really focus in on and and harn down on is this language of supernatural. What what is what does that mean? Well, let's go look at it. This one right here says the first time it's used in the New Testament is in Mark 16:17. So if we click on that, we can go over here and we can see this and it says and the signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out demon or, sorry devils and they shall speak in new tongues. I wonder what what new means. Let's go look at new first to see make sure that we're on the right track and this means a fresh fresh aspect of a representative of an age, a renewal and a renew. So it doesn't really give us much, right? It just says something that's new to, to us and we don't understand it. But let's go look at tongues. This is where, uh, where we really want to do. We want to make sure we understand this tongues. This is the Greek uh, strong number 1100 and it is glossier. It is a tongue, a language, one naturally unacquired. Okay, hold up. So if it's natural to us because we already speak it, it's uninquired. That means that we already know this language and it is a fits the definition of the Greek and Hebrew word, uh, definitions of them of a known spoken dialect. So what, it, what, what we need to also realize is that people will pull this and, and they will say, well, it's not it's not it's uninquired by man, but it's acquired by the Holy Spirit. That's not what it says. So if you say that, you have to add to the Bible, to the definitions, to fit your argument. Because the definition of this, this Greek word, is glossia, which is a supernatural, uh, a supernatural language is not there. So you can't have it. But let's go look at some more places where, where this tongue is being used. Uh, let's go find, I think it's 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 2. And it says, for, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. So this is talking about your prayer language. You can see right here that the, that the word unknown is in italics. That means it's added to the original scriptures. And they add it to try to show you that this is a language that only, only God knows between you and the Father in your prayer closet, not in public. So you can't have this definition of tongues meet the definition of speaking in tongues because you have to add to the scripture. You have to add stuff to it to fit your argument. Uh, but again, after after studying all this, it's, I know it's a little bit longer study, to understand this is this is a known dialect to the world and to get deep into it you got to understand that this particular gift of the holy spirit is a reversal of the tower of babel when when god cursed the 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 tower of babel people he spread them out and they all spoke different languages that means to spread the gospel they would have to have a way of communicating well guess what that is speaking in tongues, a known written dialect known by man in there. So to say that it is a gibberish jabberish language is adding to the scripture and it is very, very scary to do that.